So hi everyone, my name is Vincent Noel and I'm a computational biologist. So my background is more on the computer science uh, side, but I've been working with uh, topics around modeling for uh, since my PhD. Hi, so I'm Arnaud, I'm a biologist by training, and I'm currently working in computational biology doing uh, doing models mainly, different kinds of, of models. And in fact, one one of the things that I like about about modeling is that in in biology uh, we're we're basically trained to describe how or why sometimes, and what I like about modeling is that we shift the question to what for, right? I mean, why why do you want to build this or what for do you want to build this this mathematical tool in order to solve a question, in order to solve a, a disease or a help solving a disease, which is I think that's that that that's awesome. That's that's very good, and yeah, and also. Then the problem stems from the side of of now what do you do with that, right? I mean, you have this mathematical tool, and what what kind of question do you want to do you want to answer, right? I mean, and and you have like many 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 different ways of addressing this this question. Yeah, and I think that you as a biologist, you are the one to really know what you want to solve and what you want to describe, because in computer science we can describe more or less everything. We can have nearly infinite amount of detail, but still there, there needs to be a purpose for all this uh, complexity. And we also need to find a way to limit this complexity, not to have every detail that we can think of, but just the level of detail that actually are needed to solve a problem. And so you as, uh, as a modeler, as a biologist, are the best one to be able to answer this. But yeah. also from our side, what we need to think about is what is too much in terms of uh, computational power? Because we have huge machine at our disposition, but we need also to use them efficiently because they are not free for us. They look free, but they still have a huge cost uh, in terms of energy and environmental impact. Yeah, and, and in fact, I think that that's one of the that's one of the keys of of this project is that. So we have we have reached the interface between between math and physics, if you want, and biology and computer science. So what's what's awesome is that interesting questions in two of the fields can get tools or solutions from the third field in order to get to get things uh, solved, right? I mean, and and I think that that interface is very 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 interesting, in the sense that if you go to a biologist, of course, you will so you will you will you can do problems in, as interesting as a biologist using tools from maths. And also infrastructure from from computer science, right? So I think that 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 that's that's great. I think that's very interesting. Yeah, and I think that really this this pinpoint that we are always having to trying to discuss exactly what is needed and what do we want to do and what is the point of view of the other uh, specialists uh, in front of you is really something which helps mature problem and really helps tackle really uh, complex uh, complex questions. Yeah, and also the kind of questions that the other asks is is also quite different, right? I mean, I would have never thought to, of of, you know, of researching about scalability of code, unless uh, uh, working with with you guys. I mean, it it. I mean, I think that that's 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 very good. That's very good because it, it you give you give a more comprehensive or more complete solution to to a given problem. Yes, and also like I would never have thought about the question uh, you are asking, which is also the interesting point is that for us, biology is just some huge complex machine, but we need to really have something to solve and something to uh, to describe. Yeah, and in fact, to be honest, I think that that this also leads to like like a bit more uh, problems in the sense of evaluating the science, right? Because if if you go if you go with, a, with such a paper to uh, to a panel or, or to or to or editors or reviewers, I mean it's very rare that the reviewers have the same exact combination of the interface as the work that you're that you're presenting, right? So always, I mean, you need you need to balance where do you send the work or or who is the in the panel in order to defend works in in one way or another, which I mean it adds one level of complexity to this. Yes, it's true, but we need, we are working always with such specific specialization mm -hmm. that it's always difficult. But yeah. I think the field is, evol is uh, evolving more and more into this direction of, uh, of interdisciplinary work and more and more people understand the need for this. And so, yeah. like, for example, journals are more prepared for this. That's now. true. That's true. That's true. Yeah. yeah. And, and more journals are, are, 
are being uh, published in in, the, in this interface, right? I mean, if I think I think also, I mean, the, you you see that the field is also moving along with uh, with the science, which is also, I mean, it, it's also great. Okay, yeah, great. So, yeah. Sorry, sorry. No, I was I was think, saying that actually the field needs to evolve in this direction because yeah. with the complexity of the problem we are tackling, we actually are completely forced uh, to use all these uh, complementary visions. Yeah, yeah, and in fact, the, the infrastructure is there, right? I mean, we do have these HPC clusters. We do have we do have people that know how to use them, how to how to specialize codes for them, and and we just need to to collaborate in order to have to have this working in, in computational biology. Hey, okay, awesome! So, thank you very much for having me, Vincent. So, thank you, Arnaud. It was nice talking to you. Yes.